So have you ever wanted to like play games on a computer? Like me neither, it's not, it's not that big a deal, right? I actually have quite a few graphics cards, but I can only point out a few of these that are genuinely good. These ones. Before you ask, you cannot have one. They're mine. Less than half of the graphics cards I own, which isn't a very good ratio. So this is what people have been saying about graphics cards, okay? We've got words from Steve. It is a pretty boring product that at best fixes mistakes of the original. And Steve. This launch can largely be summed up with a very advanced word, meh. And the thing is, is that these guys have been reviewing tech probably since I look like this. I don't know if that was like a compliment or an insult, but I mean it as a compliment. Like these guys are really wise, they're, they know their stuff, and if they're saying that graphics cards are boring, probably know what they're talking about. And I don't think this is any kind of like jaded cynicism or anything, and it's because of this. What am, what am I pointing at? Man, do you remember when one NVIDIA GPU was like millions of views and people were excited and now a pile three of them. nvidia gpus if it's not getting views well that's an indication that it's something people don't want to watch and when you look at their more like recent reviews and stuff the ones that have been doing good are the ones that are negative so like say this rtx 46 review 3.3 million views, that's a lot of views. He's like, please stop, he's not happy in this one. And this one was ironic, because this card was really bad, but this one had two million views. So that means that people are probably viewing these graphics cards more negatively. But maybe you can help fix that with today's sponsor, Brilliant. It is the place to get all the tools that you need to do basically whatever you want. One, if you think the GPU market is bad, I think it's bad too. On Brilliant, you can learn math and engineering, giving you the foundation to change the environment that we're in. Imagine being part of the engineers to make next best revolution in PC hardware. What if you want to gather and analyze data to prove a point. Data structures and random variable lessons on Brilliant are a great place to do this. This is something that I personally do and love to do in a lot of my videos. Maybe you think that you can do this type of stuff better than me. Brilliant can teach you software engineering in order to possibly make all this testing and analysis of data completely automatic. Whatever it is, Brilliant is the funnest and most engaging way to learn anything in science, technology, engineering, and math. Why not just start building that foundation to do what you want to do? Why not start now? Seriously. <laughs> Follow the link in the description, brilliant.org slash vex. The first 200 to use my link actually get 20% off their first annual premium subscription. But if you don't make that, the first 30 days for every single person are completely free. Brilliant.org slash vex in the description. Have fun. I expect to see some great things. And let's jump back into the video. Love you, Brilliant. You would generally think on a major mainstream GPU launch like the RTX 40 Super Series that these videos would get views. And this isn't the fault of the reviewers either because I know that these reviews have an insane amount of work put into them. All that work does not translate into people caring about the product. I saw one comment that really stood out to me. Linus, nothing personal, this isn't your fault but I'm out. These GPUs are boring. I don't care. Dude, I know like the hook of one of my videos was literally just like TI Ti Super. Ti, huh? Ti Super. 4070 Ti Super. It's a, a tie? A, a meme of saying, is it TI or is it Ti? That's what I had to talk about with the graphics card because it was pretty freaking boring. I was, I was grasping at straws. We wouldn't have to do all that crap if a product like the, I don't know, the RTX 40 Super Series, if it could genuinely stand on its own two feet with its performance and its price. But Nvidia cards, you know, they're better at ray tracing. They got the DLSS and they they, they do the they do the thing. They, they um, AI. We wouldn't have to go through all of this stuff and like talk in riddles and you gotta be an expert in understanding what you need versus you don't need on a product you haven't bought yet. So yeah, I basically spent all this time talking about people don't really care about graphics cards right now. Mr. John Vex, why do people not care about graphics cards? 
That's why I've been locked in my room testing these things for literal weeks up to this point. Let's talk about it. <laughs> like, do you guys remember 2020? The, the world famous year. Do you remember when they launched the RTX 3080? Nvidia did this and we're like, holy hell, this graphics card is amazing. This thing is incredible. And then AMD followed them up, them up back to back with another banger. And this was truly a time where we're like, wow, this is really competitive. And when we look at the rest of the generation, it all stacked up. 30 series from Nvidia and 6000 series from AMD were really good sets of graphics cards. But now let's compare it to this generation. Well, the RTX 4080 was about 40% faster than the RTX 3080, but it kind of falls apart when you see that it costed 1200 freaking dollars. So it's 40% faster, but it's 70% more expensive. Okay, so maybe an 80 class card isn't really an 80 class card anymore. It's, it costs a lot more now. So instead, let's try to compare it more to cards that perform similarly and compare their prices. The RTX 4070 performs really similar to the RTX 3080 and the RX 6800 XT from AMD. This 4070 launched at $600. When you look at it compared to the last generation cards that perform similarly, it's like a 50 to a hundred dollar discount after three full years. That that's all we're getting. I mean, technically now the RTX 4070 is going for about $550 on the market and the 4070 Super has actually gone to replace it at $600. So I guess that's a little bit better. And the 4070 Super does perform quite a bit better than both of these last generation cards, but it's not that good either. We I mean, also look at AMD's RX 7900 XT, and this card is absolutely massive. Like, Azeroth, you made a cool looking model here. This card is about 40% faster than both the 3080 and the 6800 XT, which is really solid. It's kind of like how the 4080 Super is. This thing was $900. That's a 30% markup while being about 40% more expensive. It's not really that much better back when it launched. Obviously, we can look at things now. Now this card is about $700. Now you're not really playing, paying any kind of markup for 40% more performance. That's good to see. That's what we wanna see. But it took them a long time to get to this point consistently. You can see the trend though. Like GPU launches, it is pretty bad at launch or bad value. It either gets a refresh or the price gets cut in order to fix that mistake. Honestly, a lot of the times it just kind of feels like too little, too late. And really, this is what NVIDIA should have delivered to you guys 12 months ago. And not to mention that the last generation that was exciting, it, it never got to be exciting because of all the freaking shortages. We got rinsed with pricing. These cards never really got to cost what they should have cost. And then if we look back to a generation before that, before 2020, in 2018, Nvidia launched the 2000 series. AMD launched the 5000 series. Especially Nvidia's 2000 series was not that compelling to a lot of people. So it's been a long time since we've had a really like solid set of graphics cards. And that is probably the, the most annoying part about all this. But granted, there have been some cards that are actually pretty decent, like the RX 7800 XT at $500. The thing about it is the cards that are exciting, they've been selling out. Like people wanna buy them. There's interest in buying graphics cards. It's just that it, graphics cards aren't good. But what you'll notice here is that the graphics cards that I'm talking about that are good value, they cost like 500 plus dollars. So even when, there is something interesting. It's not interesting to the average person. So it's like they're raising the floor of how much we have to spend on a graphics card to get good value. And at the same time, the same freaking time, games are getting more demanding than ever. Like I, I know games always get more demanding, but they are insanely demanding right now. If you want to play some of the latest games, you got to have like these $500 graphics cards. Then the average person is out here thinking that DLSS, super resolution or frame generation is just freaking magic. More than 85% of the pixels are just generated, not computed by, for instance, ray tracing or traditional techniques. Yes, that sounds flat out 
impossible. And then they also don't realize that FSR from AMD, yeah, it's a little bit worse than a NVIDIA stuff with, that's AI based and all that. But at the same time, FSR is not that far off from DLSS. You know what? I hope that somebody goes, yeah, somebody said this in chat. I hope somebody goes, they use this on UFOs and they use this fucking sampling technology and the flying saucer turns out to be a Frisbee. It's not magic and it just makes, it just makes you go crazy. <laughs> but like, what can we do? about this ever growing cost in GPUs. The only thing that we really can do is keep buying graphics cards that are good value. Obviously, I like a card like the 7800 XT. It's good value. Buying a card like this actually encourages the companies to price their cards above $500, which isn't really what we want. So the other option is to just never upgrade your GPU. And just, just never do that. Just never upgrade your GPU ever again, or you could wait even longer until you upgrade. Hopefully that there would be something more reasonable down the line. What's actually really funny is that there might be something a lot more reasonable coming up next generation. There is signs at least that Nvidia's 5000 series might be pretty good. And I'm not guaranteeing that. I'm not a freaking fortune teller because at this point in time, Nvidia with their 4000 series graphics cards have set the foundation to get a better generational uplift next time around. One like this, it has very, very good power efficiency. So that means the next generation, they could actually up power budget of the card a lot in order to draw a lot more performance out of it. Kind of like what they did with 3000 series. The foundation is there. Will they do it? We don't know yet. And if we know anything of it, AMD might then follow suit with Nvidia and make a competitive generation of graphics cards next time around. Like one generation is crap, we don't like it. And then boom, we all just get excited again when they release a good generation. My question to you, did I, did I get this down? Like, are you guys tracking with me? Are you guys not excited for graphics cards? And are you not excited for the reasons that I talked about in this video? Is it the performance? Is it the constant generational, like bad value? Is it because the floor of graphics cards have raised to levels that $500 or so is a lot to spend on one part of your computer? That's as much as a PS5. Also make sure to check out Brilliant. Their link is in the description. I actually really like the service. So go and check it out and learn something with them. That's been it for me though. Let me know what you think. See you next video. Peace. I was so sad. I was crying. I'm like a tomato.